This presentation covers the visual assessment, written procedure requirements, sample collection, narrative standard, and sample assessment. The purpose of the visual assessment is to assess compliance with the narrative standard and ensure effectiveness of the control measures at the facility. The control measures are outlined in the Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan. Because studies have shown that stormwater runoff has a major impact on the quality of surface waters, conducting visual assessments of stormwater discharges from areas of industrial activity is a permit requirement for regulated facilities in Michigan. Many of the pollutants that contaminate stormwater visually alter the appearance of the runoff. The permit requires the discharge meet the narrative standard. The narrative standard requires that the receiving water shall not have unnatural turbidity, color, oil films, floating solids, foams, settleable solids, suspended solids, or deposits as a result of the discharge. Stormwater permits require the visual assessment be conducted as part of the comprehensive inspection. Comprehensive inspections are required quarterly or on an alternate schedule that has been approved by the Water Resource Division of Eagle. The comprehensive inspection must be conducted by an industrial stormwater certified operator and the visual assessment must be completed within 30 days before or after this inspection. Now let's review the written procedure requirement. The permittee is required to develop written procedures for conducting the visual assessments at their facility. The written procedures describe how, when, where, and whom will collect the stormwater runoff from the facility and how it will be assessed. Training must be conducted annually for staff that will collect the sample for the visual assessment. Viewing this presentation along with review of the facility's written procedure is considered appropriate training. A description of the training for staff must be included in the written procedures and documentation of the training should be kept with the visual assessment records. To collect the stormwater sample, there may be reasons to use automated samplers or personnel other than a certified stormwater operator. However, the certified operator must perform the evaluation of the collected sample and determine the effectiveness of the structural and non-structural controls. Samples are collected at discharge points, which are the locations where stormwater is released and must be included in the Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan site map and visual assessment written procedures. There are two types of discharge points, outfalls and points of discharge. Outfalls are the point where the stormwater discharges directly to the surface waters of the state, including streams, lakes, ponds, county drains, and wetlands. Point source discharges are defined as any discernible conveyance, such as pipes, channels, conduits, or ditches from the facility. Points of discharge are where stormwater is discharged to a separate storm sewer system. These can be on-site catch basins, trench drains, in-street catch basins, and conveyances to roadside ditches. The visual assessment sample should be taken as close to the point of discharge as possible before stormwater enters the municipal or private storm sewer system. Some facilities have discharge points that discharge substantially identical stormwater as determined during the development of the Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan. In this case, the facility may collect discharge at one point for the visual assessment, but shall sample alternate discharge points on a rotating basis. After the written procedures are developed, prepare for sample collection at the discharge points identified in the Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan site map. Ensure that you have safe and easy access to each discharge point. If special collection equipment is needed, it will be identified in your written procedure. Plan ahead and have equipment ready so you'll be able to collect the visual assessment sample within 30 minutes of the start of discharge from a qualifying storm event. A qualifying event is any precipitation or melt event that results in a discharge from the facility occurring 72 hours since the previous discharge. Visual assessment samples must be collected in each quarter and within 30 days of the comprehensive inspection. If the sample is not collected within 30 minutes of the start of discharge, it must be collected within 60 minutes and documentation must include an explanation of why additional time was required. Samples will need to be collected so they can be visually assessed in a clean, clear container. 
Should adverse weather conditions create inaccessibility to the sample location or create conditions that would be dangerous to personnel, a substitute visual assessment shall be conducted during the next qualifying storm event. Other adverse conditions can be where no discharge occurs, such as extended dry periods or extended cold periods where there is no snow melt. If you miss a qualifying event, you shall collect the visual sample during the next qualifying event. The reason for the alternate sample must be included in the visual assessment documentation. Structural controls may be in place to remove contaminants from the stormwater runoff. The stormwater sample should be collected after the stormwater has passed through the structural control for assessment of the stormwater discharging from the facility. In these situations, sample collection will be more difficult and specialized equipment may be needed. This information should be included in the written procedures. The collection of a sample from snow melt event must be during a period of measurable discharge. Basically, there must be flowing melt water. The visual assessment involves both noting observations of the storm water discharging and the assessment of the sample collected from each discharge point. Record your observations of the discharge, including any violations of the narrative standard as a result of the discharge. The following are examples of reportable characteristics in violation of the narrative standard. Unnatural color. Contaminants in the discharge may cause it to be discolored. It's important that you have a general idea of the normal color of the receiving waters to which the facility discharges. Document both the color of the discharge and the color of the receiving waters. Note, naturally occurring pollen or algal blooms producing unusually colored water should also be documented. Unnatural turbidity. Turbidity is the measure of water clarity by evaluating how well light passes through it. If you are observing an outfall, also note the turbidity of the receiving waters. If the discharge is more turbid than the receiving waters, a plume will extend downstream. Turbidity may also show as liquids that are suspended in the water. An example is the milky appearance of soluble oils in water. Oil films. Oil films or sheens in the receiving waters as a result of the discharge are a violation of the narrative standard. It is important to note that sheens can be caused by petroleum products or bacteria. Bacterial sheens differ from petroleum sheens as they will break into fragments when disturbed. Any sheen must be noted during the visual assessment. Floating solids associated with the industrial activity can indicate housekeeping issues. These materials will often be deposited at the outfall or around a discharge point. Unnatural foams. When organic substances fall into the water and begin to decay, they release compounds known as surfactants. Surfactants allow air to more easily mix with water and create bubbles, causing natural foams. Unnatural foams are formed when there are contaminants acting as surfactants and should be documented. Settable solids are materials that are larger in size with a greater density and will settle out of the water quickly. In the stormwater sample, the settable solids will rest on the bottom of the container within a few minutes. Lastly, suspended solids are smaller in size than settleable solids, which allows them to stay in suspension. These will take longer periods of time to settle out and will be more challenging to manage. Following the field observations, thorough documentation of the visual assessment is required. EGLE has a form to record the results of the visual assessment from each discharge point. EGLE highly recommends this form be used to document the required information. If multiple discharge points are sampled, ensure the jars are labeled. The samples should be assessed in a well-lit area with a white background. A certified operator must conduct the visual assessment of the stormwater samples within 48 hours of collection and will need to gently shake or mix the sample before assessing. Both the name of the person collecting the sample and the certified operator conducting the visual assessment need to be included on the form. After the sample is visually assessed by the certified operator, a color photo of the sample against a white background must be saved with the completed visual assessment form. 
If there were water quality concerns or unnatural characteristics in the discharge, perform investigations and make corrective actions in a timely manner. If the discharge is causing a violation of the narrative standard, notify Eagle District Office. Performing visual assessments is an important step to protect the invaluable surface waters of our state. Thank you for doing your part.